Wearing your hair in its raw, natural state is not the only way to be natural and it's not a crime to choose otherwise. We need to stop making each other feel like if you're not wearing your hair the way it was when you came out of your mother's womb, then you're, you're evil. Like, no. <laughs> In this video, I am talking about natural hair pressures, habits, and rules that are keeping us imprisoned, feeling guilty, not enjoying our hair, and overall just stuck and frustrated with our natural hair. This is a video that I believe, well, I'm hoping is going to liberate a lot of us to truly just love on our hair, embrace our hair without guilt and really wear it the way we choose. That should be the whole purpose at the end of the day. So if you're interested, keep watching. Disclaimer, I am not saying any of these things are bad in and of themselves. Um, for example, if you choose to wash your hair every week and it's working for you, keep doing that. If you like to lay your edges down and that's your thing, keep doing that. The aim of the video is to say that not one size fits all, one. And number two, none of us should think that just because the way we think or the way we wear our hair is working or this is what we believe to be the right thing, that this should be right with everyone and that everybody that doesn't do as we do then is fake or not quite right or not welcome or we distance ourselves and we want, don't want to mingle with each other because I don't know you do your hair differently. I am talking the rules that keep us in cliques here in, natural, in the natural hair community. The rules that keep us from venturing out with our hair, expressing ourselves with our hair, that keep us, you know, really sad. Because at the end of the day, the way you look, the way you wear your hair and the way you express it is a part of your personality. It's a part of who you are. And so that shouldn't be restricted. You will find that for example, if you, I don't know about you, but each time I wear a style that I like or I have a new style, new hairdo, for example, that actually lifts up my mood. That tells you something, that the way you wear your hair actually contributes to your well-being. So some people might argue and say, oh, you know, you're taking it too, you're taking it too far. This is too, it's not that deep. It's just hair, really hair. Your hair really just brings your look together. It's such a big part of your overall look that it could actually impede your mood or the way you feel about yourself. Um, it's a little bit like having a bed in the bedroom. If the bed is not made, the, the entire room is really not going to look quite right. The moment you make the bed, yeah, you can kind of see some order. You can kind of start to see, okay, this is, this is nice. So same thing with hair. Hair is really at the top of our head. Like everybody sees our hair. So I believe that you should feel good with the way you're wearing your hair or the way you look. And I'm not saying that one style is better than the other or this look is better than the other or this style one make, doesn't make us feel good and the other one does. But I am just trying to break this stigma that there's only one way of being natural so to speak and and i'm not saying you can't wear all these different styles you can but don't feel like you have to wear all these different styles and also don't feel like you only have to wear one style i hope that doesn't confuse you but really find what works for you. find what you enjoy find the best style for your face for example what frames your face the best? Is it a bob? Is it a uh, twist out? Is it a big chop? Is it straight hair? Is it wash and goes? Is it an updo? Right? Pineapple? Is it twists? Is it braids? That's the aim of this video, to really liberate us to express our hair as much 
or not as much, but the way we choose, okay, without feeling guilty, without feeling judgment, and navigating that to to retain length or still see us achieving our goals. Because I think some of the things that keep us imprisoned is that, oh, I'm retaining my length, therefore I'm only doing this. And yes, there is a sacrifice to retaining length. If you want aggressive length, I stand by it. If you want aggressive length in the shortest amount of time, the certain things that you need to do if you are, say, for example, a, a curly natural, a coily natural. If you're a straight natural, for example, that looks different. If you're a wash and go natural, that looks different. If you're a freestyler, that looks different. If you are a protective styler, braided, twisted natural, it's different. So I'm hoping that, yeah, if, you, if you're in this space that you feel a little bit validated, that if you want to express your hair a little bit more, while figuring out how you can still retain length and have healthy hair that you love within that, then let's do it. That's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, just trying to get the background out of the way. Another thing, sorry, but another thing that I just want to say is that one thing to note or a lesson to learn is that people with different textures, people of other ethnic groups, even though they have their natural hair or their natural hair is maybe wavy or straight or brunette or whatever they still go ahead to choose how they want to wear their hair some people like to wear their hair with gel so they put gel they're known for that curly style if you found them at home without the gel on their hair might be wavy or straight you have people that are brunettes that choose to be blondes you have people that really have hair that grows really long but they choose to have short hair you have people that choose different things, that want to wear slick styles, you know, ponytail. It's a preference, okay? That's how they like to present. It's a preference. So they're, they're free to wear the hair the way they want. And that's what I, I hope us as black women can achieve as well. The first thing is DIYs only. I have been one of those people who thought, my gosh, DIYs is the only way. It's going to grow your hair. It's going to thicken your hair. This is what you need. This is the only way to be successful with hair. It is not the only way to be successful with hair. If anything, DIYs are really a preference. DIYs are not the be all end all of healthy hair. Like there are other ways to enjoy your hair and still have healthy hair without ever having to do DIYs. In fact, I can even argue that it's unnecessary for you to be doing DIYs unless it's a preference of yours. Okay. I know people who don't do DIYs for years and they just, they've got no more hair. <laughs> before i started doing diys as a child i didn't even deep condition deep condition my hair i had no more hair so don't feel like you have to do diys if it's a preference of yours if you find benefit with it you love your hot oil treatments go for it no one's gonna stop you and no one should stop you enjoy your diys however let's stop making it look like diys are a must they really aren't the push and the idea that we should all stay natural. And when I say stay natural, as in we should all wear our hair in its most natural state. Like I said already, other groups have their natural hair, yeah, but they decide how they want to wear it. Some people curl their hair with a curling iron. Some people use gel. Some people wear a ponytail. Some people dye their hair. Some people flat iron their hair, blow out their hair, whatever. But people choose the preference, shorter hair, you name it. So wearing your hair in its raw, natural state is not the only way to be natural. And it's not a crime to choose otherwise. We need to stop making each other feel like if you're not wearing your hair the way it was when you came out of your mother's womb, then you're you're evil. Like, no, it's okay if you choose that you want to do wash and goes. It's okay if you want to say, okay, I want to wear crochet once in a while. It's okay to say, I want to wear braids once in a while. It's okay to say, I want to flat iron my hair, or I want to blow my hair, or I want to cut my hair shorter, I want a pixie cut. That's fine. People are allowed to choose what style works for them. And I, I'm at a stage where I'm saying, I think we should now be getting into a place where we're wearing our hair more 
rather than wigs more. Why are we wearing a straighter wig or a curly wig instead of cre recreating that style with our own hair? Why not just blow out your hair and wearing your real hair? You'll feel better, you'll feel more confident, you'll feel more beautiful because your actual hair. Wigs are okay. Like I'm not saying don't wear wigs and that's the point of this video. If you were a wig wearer, okay. But if you're like me, like I find wigs... They embarrass me sometimes, especially going outside. I feel like people are looking at me like, mm, is that your hair? How did it get like that all of a sudden? I mean, they're not the most comfortable thing. I can feel there's something on the hair. Um, and if I could get my hair to look like this, <laughs> girl, I would be unstoppable. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, do not feel like you can only wear your hair in its shrunken 4B, 4C kinky state. You can actually decide how you want to wear your hair. Weekly washes and monthly washes are not set in stone. I'm a monthly washer. I know there's people that wash their hair every week. Neither of these are right. Neither of them are wrong. You are allowed to wash your hair as much as you want or as much as needed or to wash your hair in a way or as often as it works for you and your lifestyle and your routine. Let's stop making it look like there's only the weekly washes and then there's the monthly washes. There isn't. There is just black women with different lifestyles that can decide how much or how often they need to wash their hair. Protective styles. You can decide to wear your hair in protective styles and you can choose not. Either way should not be frowned upon. The problem comes when, of course, you're not looking after your real hair or you're overdoing it and then now it's starting to impact your real hair. Um, but I feel like you should be free to express yourself, whether you're wearing crochet, whether you're wearing braids, twists, weaves. At the end of the day, we are black women and all these things make us who we are. Um, all the parts, all the moving parts of our hair history make us who we are. And the important thing is to love your hair, enjoy your hair, embrace your hair. How you then decide to wear it, very different things. To trim or not to trim? Never ever trim your hair. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> if you decide not to trim your hair, that's fine. If you decide to trim your hair, that's fine too. Let's not put each other in a box and not allow each other to do as we see fit for our own hair or as we view to be the right way i think black women should be allowed to do that which they see fit that which they see suitable that which coincides with their lifestyle and that includes trims this whole idea that you must trim your hair every week or every not every week every you know couple of months or once a year or whatever okay but I mean, that's not going to be everyone's portion. It's not going to be applicable to everybody. So we should allow each other to do that which we want to do. And if you see someone with ends that aren't perfect, oh my God, you need to trim your ends. Or like, it's their hair. Maybe their ends, they, they're okay with those ends. I don't know. Oh my gosh, your hair is hair damaged. You have to cut it. Um, maybe they don't want to. Maybe it's okay because they are straight natural. Oh, oh my gosh, your, your wash and go is not well defined. Uh, I don't mind. I, I, I don't mind. Like, I like it. Your afro, it's not perfect. It's like this. Uh, who cares? Like, what? It's my hair. You should be allowed. You should be allowed. Edge control. We come for the people with edge control, don't we? We come for the people with edge mm -mm. We come for the people with edge control. Yeah, I do see a problem with people that lay their edges up to here. I'm not going to lie. Because what is that? <laughs> but if you want to use some gel on your edges, that shouldn't be frowned upon. Again, if you don't want to wear or lay your edges down, that should be fine. If you want to wear them in, in their natural state. Let's not put each other in boxes. Let's do that which we want to do with our hair. 
you are free to do what you want with your hair. Have so many products or you're gonna die. No. If you want to be a minimalist, be that. If you want to be a product junkie, with a heavy heart, I will say that you can be. I do have a problem with, with um, product junkies because obviously you don't need that many products. You really don't. Um, don't waste your money if you're not going to use all the products. Number two, there's a lot of toxins in these products. You don't want to be putting all sorts of things in your hair. Number three, the junk. You don't need the junk. I guess maybe you do. I don't want to contradict myself in the video. You can be a product junkie, but don't feel like you have to. And if you want to be a minimalist with only three products, do that. Never, ever, 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 ever use heat on your hair. <laughs> heat has got replications. If you are aware that heat can damage your hair, if you're aware that heat can dry your hair, can weaken your hair, can weaken your, look, your curl pattern, and you still decide to use heat, that's fine. Um, so to my curly naturals and myself included, like I have not found heat to be beneficial for, um, my hair, particularly in its curly state. But if I was someone that wore my hair straight, of course I would have to deal with it <laughs> and pay the sacrifice of using heat. The same way, actually, wearing your hair in its curly state does have some disadvantages. I got you on that. You were not expecting that. Just because you feel like, okay, curly hair is it. And then everybody that's straightening their hair or wearing straighter hair is looked down upon. That's not really the case. There is pros and cons to both sides of the story. So if you want to use heat on your hair, yes, use with caution. Yes, try to keep your hair healthy. Educate yourself. Do it properly, etc. But if you want to do it, you do that. You cannot enjoy your hair. Don't express yourself with your hair. You have to hide it all the time in a wig, in a weave, in a scarf because you're protective styling. Look, if you want to hear, wear your hair out, if you want to express your hair, do that. And navigate length retention while enjoying your hair. Yes, if you're one person that wants to aggressively protect your style and get that length, then enjoy your hair, that's okay too. However, if you want to try and do both, that's okay. Do that. <laughs> If you want to be a straight natural, be a straight natural. If you want to be a wash and go natural, be a wash and go natural. If you want to dye your hair, dye your hair. If you want to cut your hair, cut your hair. If you have heat damage, you don't have to cut your hair. These rules, these things that have been put in the community that keep us scared, guilty, imprisoned really, need to go. Like... We need to allow each other to just be. And I feel like this is the real freedom that comes with natural hair. Like you can wear it in its most natural state or you can get creative. And I see it as creativity because, I mean, hair is hair. It does so many things. So you don't have to restrict it to just one look. Let me know if you can think of other rules or other things that we can work on as a community to better ourselves and to keep improving ourselves. I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you found value in it. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your hair. Until next time. Bye.